Hey friend, welcome to Grounded, the vestibular podcast. I'm Dr. Madison Oak, aka the Vertigo Doctor. I am the vestibular physical therapist who is here to help you with all things dizziness, imbalance, and vertigo. In this podcast, we explore the fascinating world of vestibular disorders. Come with me as we dive headfirst into a journey to discover the mysteries of the brain, the inner ear, and the balance mechanisms that keep us grounded. Whether you've been managing dizziness for one day or 25 years, we're going to get real about what it takes to manage dizziness, handle the anxiety cycle, and thrive, not just survive, with your vestibular disorder. First, I want to remind you that this is never medical advice. Remember, this podcast is for informational purposes only and may not be the best fit for you and your personal situation. It shall not be construed as medical advice. The information and education provided here is not intended or implied to supplement or replace professional medical treatment advice and or diagnosis. Always check with your own physician, medical professionals, and healthcare team before trying or implementing any information found here. Hello and welcome back to Grounded. My name is Dr. Madison Oak and today we are doing the vestibular group fit win of the week first and foremost as always. This week's win is by Danielle. Last week prior to this win she asked us questions about driving again and returning to driving and then she said that she did a hour-long drive in a snowstorm to see where her son's track meet was going to be and then on Saturday she posted I started driving again. I went to two stores, and I even drove my son to track practice. This is a lot of amazing stuff, and I want to break it down. Obviously, beginning to drive again is always going to be a huge deal and one of my favorite things because there's so much independence involved. Driving is something that so many people ask about. Honestly, it's probably like one of my most frequently asked questions. And... Returning to driving is difficult for many reasons, but mainly because there's so many things to think about when you are driving, and technically driving is dangerous, right? But then not only did she, like, go drive around the neighborhood, which is how I recommend you start, but then she went into two stores, which is separately irritating and difficult, and then drove her son to track practice, which is another difficult thing. So I'm really, really proud of you, Danielle. Congratulations. Driving your kid somewhere is often extra difficult and extra triggering because at the end of the day, you driving yourself somewhere is like, okay, yes, this is hard, this is difficult, all the things. But when you put someone you love in the car, that can add an extra layer of difficulty or anxiety or anything like that. And so being able to drive your kid somewhere and feeling safe in doing that is absolutely fantastic. So congratulations to Danielle. I'm really, really happy for you. She did this, of course, with the help of Vestibular Group Fit. Remember, always, as always, Vestibular Group Fit is, has a 15% off discount. If you have questions about that, you can use the code GROUNDED at checkout for 15% off, and we are here to help you in group. All right, let's jump into the show. Today, we are talking about magnesium. You guys have a lot of questions about magnesium, and honestly, I'm not surprised because... It's a confusing thing because why are there like 150,000 types of magnesium? Magnesium is a chemical element that is found in our body to help with over 300 enzymatic and biochemical functions. There are over 3,700 magnesium binding sites in your body and 75% of us are deficient, which is crazy. It helps with everything from blood pressure normalization to glycolysis, blood sugar levels, making your bones strong, uh, helping with your heart rhythm, energy production, makes protein, makes DNA. It does so many things. We absolutely positively cannot live without magnesium. And if you have vestibular migraine, you need magnesium extra. You are even more likely to be magnesium deficient if you have a migraine disorder. I don't know why this is, but it is really, really common. And when you are having an attack, you are even more magnesium deficient, which is why I recommend magnesium be a part of everyone's um, acute toolkit. There are a couple of different studies um, on, I mean, a couple. There are so many studies about migraine and magnesium, which is cool. Um, But 
using magnesium preventatively and acutely have been found to reduce migraine frequency from 41 to almost 70 percent which is amazing um, magnesium should and can be taken both preventatively and acutely which is also really cool and some research shows that it can be just as effective as some medications like over or prescription medications at treating migraine so these are studies by Moskop et al. from 2002 and Mayer et al. Uh, from 2020. So pretty cool stuff. Magnesium is amazing if you're not taking it. Almost everyone should be. But the type that you are taking and how much varies person to person. Most studies show pretty high doses for people with migraine from 600 or 400 to 1500 a day. So I've seen them literally studies from 400 to 1500 milligrams every single day, which is really a big gap. And this is why I have such a problem with the like combination pills, because people are like, well, I'm taking like all of all of the things that I need to take between like the, the riboflavin and um, the CoQ10 and all the other things that I need. Uh, in one cool small pill, but it's usually just n simply not enough. Like there's usually between 50 and 200 milligrams of magnesium. I also know that there is a very popular doctor who has his own um, supplement brand and it says like everything is in therapeutic doses. But if you look at the research and then look at that supplement, it's definitely not. So do your research and make sure that you are taking all of your supplements uh, separately for this exact reason. So the types of magnesium that we hear most about are in this world are magnesium glycinate, magnesium threonate, magnesium oxide, and magnesium citrate. There's also like malate, trimac, there's a bajillion. Um, but those are the ones that we talk most frequently about, at least in, in my practice, the ones we talk about most frequently. Um, and then the back of it, and I want to mention this, it says the back – something about elemental magnesium. Magnesium is not something that you can find or that would be safe to take purely by itself. You need to take magnesium attached to something and it's attached to a salt. I don't mean like table salt. I mean like a elemental salt or chemical salt. So people like to take magnesium glycinate, right? Magnesium threonate magnesium citrate and these are all have different bioavailabilities as well as different elementals so for example the elemental magnesium means let's say for oxide is 60 percent elemental magnesium so that would sound really great whereas magnesium glycinate has 14 percent elemental magnesium and when they talk about like take 400 to 1500 milligrams a day, they mean of the capsules themselves. They don't mean of elemental magnesium. That's not what we're counting. So if it has 60% in magnesium oxide, you might think that's better. I can take less of it because um, it's going to be ultimately like, let's say, easier or uh, I can, it's going to be cheaper because I can take less or whatever. How, because bioavailability, but there's something called bioavailability. And that's how easily your body is going to absorb that type of magnesium. So, for example, if we go back to magnesium oxide, it is usually a less expensive supplement, but it's an inorganic form of magnesium. This is where it gets a little bit confusing. Um, and therefore, it's more difficult to absorb and often causes more digestive issues like diarrhea due to poor absorption, um, where other organic forms are often considered gentler on the stomach. Hopefully, that makes sense. So we want to think about all of these things when it comes to magnesium and if you have a history of constipation and you're like, I need to go to the bathroom more, maybe 
magnesium citrate might be a better idea because it's an organic form. It's more bioavailable than something like zinc oxide, despite it having a smaller elemental percentage. This is, again, where this gets confusing and super, super person-dependent because rather than just being like, I'm going to take the one with the highest elemental, it's not necessarily the best thing for your body. I personally like everyone to take magnesium glycinate unless they have a constipation history because I don't think that, honestly, pooping all the time and feeling like you have diarrhea is worth taking a cheaper magnesium. It's just not. Um Magnesium citrate usually has about 16% elemental, glycinate is 14, and magnesium 3 and 8 is 8 to 12%. So what do I take? This is a great question. Again, it's going to be completely and totally up to you. We need to consider all of the factors. Elemental, the salt attached, uh, how much you might want to affect you personally, the bioavailability, your history with GI upset, and so many other things. So definitely talk to your doctor about this. Um, but there's no one size fits all. So please, I guess, like, just think about it before you do it. Think about what you might actually want to be doing here because at the end of the day, it matters that you're feeling better not necessarily what type you're taking. So yeah, that's just a bunch of stuff to think about. You also want to think about the brand. And I have a podcast called The Wellbeing, which is all about being the most well version of yourself. And we talk about how to get the safest version of supplements for you personally. And this is also super, super, super important, but the things to think about with that are making sure, honestly, that you're not buying them from Target. Like, I'm just going to go out and say it. Amazon too, but that's like, you could find a way probably to like, like go to their storefront and then whatever. But here's the thing. Magnesium from Target, let's say is going to be different and have more additives than magnesium from pure encapsulations, for example, or thorn or something like that. And remember, if you are a member of Vestibular Group Fit or want to become one, um, we give 30% off all supplements to everyone in the US, 10% on Canada. And unfortunately, the discount just doesn't work in other countries. But um, I do want you to know that that is an, an availability for you. And for a lot of people, if not most people, it actually goes ahead and pays for um, what ends up being their subscription, which is pretty cool because of the amount of money that you save. So if you look at magnesium glycinate from pure encapsulations, it looks a lot different than the one from, let's say, Nature Made, which is a common one from Target. So I have pulled up both Nature Made as well as uh, Pure Encapsulations and then also the Up and Up brand, which we all know is Target. So these are three very readily and easily available versions in at least the United States. So Pure Encapsulations Magnesium is literally magnesium glycinate. And then other ingredient says vegetarian capsule, so it does have to be held in something. And then asorbyl palmitate, which is vitamin C, which helps to stabilize it, basically, and make it so it doesn't go bad, which obviously we need to do somehow. Then if we go to the one from Up and Up, it says magnesium supplement. I tried to find magnesium glycinate to put these the same across the board, but Up and Up didn't look like they had one. So this is 250 milligrams rather than 120, um, and it is a magnesium oxide. So again, that's more magnesium, that's more uh, elemental, but it's way lower on the bioavailability and more likely to give you diarrhea. So already I'm not such a fan. Then it says 
microcrystalline cellulose, which a lot of people are surprisingly uh, sensitive to, myself included. I try to avoid microcrystalline cellulose, but if you're not sensitive to it, then whatever. Um, then calcium carbonate, and then contains 2% or less of carboxymethyl cellulose, sodium, uh, citric acid, magnesium stearate, silica, starch, and stearic acid. Like you clearly just don't need that many things in there if someone else is making it without it. And so I'm like, literally why? Um, then the magnesium glycinate from, let's go with Nature Made is next. I've seen Nature Made add uh, maltodextrin and sugar to supplements. So I'm thrilled that it doesn't have it in this, but it makes me so angry that they put it in any of their supplements that I am boycotting them personally forever. Um, <clears throat> this one's other ingredients are hypromellose, I don't know what that is, magnesium stearate, cellulose gel, and silicon dioxide, which I do not love. So it just doesn't seem like we need to have so many things in all of the supplements, like getting the most pure, most simple version of a supplement is ultimately going to do you the most good at the end of the day we want you to take a healthy version of whatever it is that you are taking so if you are taking something with a ton of different additives it's kind of like taking something with a lot of like a uh or eating one apple with that's organic and an inorganic apple Both apples are going to provide nutrients, but one has been maybe sprayed with glyphosate where the other one hasn't. So it's just things to, cons to consider when it comes to magnesium. Um, most of my patients end up with some combination of glycinate and threonate, and the threonate tends to help with brain fog. You take it in the morning. Everyone else in the world takes it at night to sleep, but people with migraine, I find it actually kind of helps to give you a kick in the butt in the morning. Um rather than having caffeine, which you probably no longer can have. And so that can be really helpful as well. Hopefully this has been helpful. Let me know if you have questions. Please remember you get 30% off all supplements in vestibular group fit via full script. Um, it is in the under support and then the FAQs if you are looking for that link in group or you can always message me and I will send it to you. If you are not a member of vestibular group fit, that is not an option for you. If you want to sign up for vestibular group fit, then it will be an option. Um, get 15% off by using code grounded at checkout. I love you and I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks so much for listening today. Find me on Instagram at the vertigo doctor, Dr. Jenna at dizzy.rehab.therapist and the pod at grounded.vestibular.pod. Remember to rate, review, and subscribe to our channel wherever you get this podcast. And if you're interested in working with us, try Vestibular Group Fit, the affordable, comprehensive program that focuses on movement, mindset, support, and education to take you from frustrated and dizzy to feeling in control of your vestibular disorder. Use code GROUNDED at checkout for 10% off your first subscription. Or we can work together one on one in California, Virginia, Minnesota, Maryland. New Jersey, New York, Wyoming, and Wisconsin. Your success story begins today. Dizziness does not have to be forever. Let's get you the right tools to thrive. Love ya, and we'll see you next time on Grounded. Grounded.